morning everybody. It's early. Wait for the gate to open up. We're in Brainerd, Minnesota. I have that load of lumber on my trailer behind me, tarped. So as soon as we get let in the gate, I'm gonna get in there, take the tarps off. I'm third in line. We'll get the guys in front of me unloaded. And I'll get unloaded and we're gonna book it back to Kenora, Ontario, about six hours north of here in Canada. Grab another one of these loads and come right back down here. We'll be unloading that tomorrow. Hopefully that guy at the front is awake. The guy in front of me is. He's running and ready to go already. No time to waste today. So they held up really good for the first trip. No holes. <laughs> got most of my bungees off here. Kind of get the rest of them off, roll these up for the first time, and put them away. This is the Mississippi River here in Minnesota. That's a long river. Just getting out of Brainerd, we're going up the north side, or out the north end, headed towards Odette, Minnesota, where we'll cross into Canada, into uh, Rainy River, Ontario. Got an empty step deck behind us. Wanna get loaded today yet, and by the looks of it, we'll have plenty of time to get there. at least 15 minutes so if I know I'm gonna be there at let's say 1 30 I'll say meters, turn right on international drive and then 72 if I know I'm gonna be there at 1 30 I'll say I'll be there at 1 15 I sorry I said that backwards now Karen you messed me all up you interrupted me if I know I'm gonna be there at 1 30 I'll say my ETA is 1 45 That way I look good, because I showed up early. And it also gives a little bit of wiggle room if anything goes wrong, or if I need to stop and go to the bathroom or something, right? Approaching 
approaching destination in one kilometer on the right side. I don't know if we'll see it on the right here. There's still people with their vehicles out on the ice on the river. You see it through the trees there just a little bit? They're the pickup trucks and walking around out on the ice on the river. I, I, they know this area. The locals know this area better than me, so I shouldn't judge, but uh, you wouldn't find me out there. It's way too warm for that. That ice is getting thin. Obviously, they know better than me, so. But uh, I still wouldn't do it. That's, that's a river beneath there. And one of my biggest fears is falling through the ice on a river and being sucked underneath the ice and downstream. Nope, I don't go on frozen rivers. I'll go on frozen lakes and ponds, maybe, when it's cold, but not a river. Destination of 200 meters on the right side. Yes. Yeah, they're still over there. That would freak me out. So the flag of Canada is still a half mast. Destination on the right side, Canada border, Rainy River, Highway 11. Keep interrupting me. Still at half mast, all the flags of Canada. It must be for uh, the former prime minister, uh, his death. I thought that was like two weeks ago already. I wonder, I guess they stay down for a while, which is all right. That's proper respect. Welcome to Ontario. I like this border crossing. They're always so friendly here. Not that they're not friendly in other places, but. I also like it because there's no toll. <laughs> the Fort Francis crossing has a toll. I don't like that. I don't like being charged money to come home. I live here. This is my home. Why are you charging me money to come home? You think that because at Fort Francis into International Falls, Minnesota, you guys all know this already probably, but. There's no toll if you go south into the US. No toll to leave. There's only a toll to come back. In my opinion, I, 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 I don't know. It's kind of insulting. What, do you not want me back? You make it free for me to leave. You're like, here, get out of here. It's free, get out of here. Oh, but if you come back, you're gonna have to pay 25 bucks. Wait, what? <laughs> I belong here. I could understand charging me to, to leave, you know. Hey, well, you wanna go visit our neighbor? You wanna go spend your money down there because everything up here is too expensive? Oh yeah, I see what you're doing. I'm gonna charge you 25 bucks to leave. But it's free to come back if you wanna come back and spend your money up here. See, that would make sense. No, they just incentivize it. Everything's cheaper in the US. The fuel's cheaper down there. And it's free to cross. But if you come back, we're going to get you at the moment you cross over the border. And then we're going to get you again at the pumps. We're going to get you again at the grocery store. We're going to get you again on your home heating. And then we're going to get you again every time you buy or sell something. We're just going to get you. We're going to get you. We're going to get you again. And then on all of that tax, we're going to charge that tax. Welcome home. Thanks, eh? Thanks. So glad to be home. <laughs> you know, it's, it's true, isn't it? It's true. So we're driving through Rainy River right now. Nice little town right on the border. Its sister town would be Bodette on the other side that we went through. we got to go all the way down this road for another 30 miles, 50 kilometers. Then we'll hit Highway 71. And we'll head north all the way up to Highway 17. Turn west, go a few miles up to Kenora. a lot of people living here. I wonder what the main industry is here. There's a lot of people here. Where does everybody work? I don't see any big factories, though I'm sure they're here. Logging, I'm sure, is one of the industries. There's got to be something here that's keeping people here, right? There's got to be jobs for people. Otherwise, why would people live here? Everyone's got bills to pay. they got taxes to pay, so... They all gotta work somewhere.
Bell Blue. We're ready to go. Just messy out here. Look at that. Messing everything up. Trip number two with these tarps. You know, these rings are a little further apart than my other tarps. See, this is a ring here and a ring there. My other tarps had a ring in here too. That would be very nice. But you know what? I'm not complaining because I like these. They're a lot better. They're a lot better. Okay, okay. I know, I missed you too. I missed, I missed you too. I missed you too. Ugh, throw my gear away. I think I have about five hours left I can drive. You have five hours and 58 minutes of remaining drive time. Thank you. Mm. All right, we had to make this quick detour to go and grab fuel. Just wetting our tanks. Probably put in about mm, 100 liters or so. We'll see. Just enough to get us down to Brainerd. Just got a little bit, 160 gallons or 40, no, 160 liters or 42 gallons. 160 liters, 42 gallons. The price for me here on my card at the Petro Pass was $1.60 per liter Canadian. Cost me $256.43 Canadian. Down in the US, uh, fuel prices will be more around $1.10 to $1.20 with all conversions. So, got just enough to get us down there. I put it all in my passenger tank, so it's not showing up on my fuel gauge yet, but... <laughs> my fuel gauge is on my driver's side. I have a fuel gauge for my passenger side, but... Womp womp! <laughs> that reminds me, I've got to dust this place. You see all that dust? You tell me you didn't see it. Thank you, you're a good friend. You didn't see anything. I know. I know. Let's... Let's... Oh yeah. Oh, 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 that feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh. Look at that dust. Okay, I'm a weird guy. Let's get that back up there. So yeah, this fuel gauge, uh, not working, but this is the main fuel gauge. This is the tank where all the fuel gets sucked out of. Now they're connected. So fuel from this tank will flow into that tank and they'll balance out. So this gauge is accurate for both tanks. It just takes a few minutes now for all the fuel to that I put in my passenger tank to level out with the other tank and then it'll show me accurate. But it's all good. It's already going up. Let's get going. We got we got a little ways to go. I think we're gonna try to make it to Deer River, Minnesota tonight. And don't forget we're also testing uh, to see which road is faster going through International Falls once we cross the border. Is it faster to go on the bypass, which we timed yesterday, or is it faster to go through town? Now it's definitely shorter to go through town, but is it faster? We're gonna find out today. We're gonna to time it. Gonna figure out who's right and who's wrong. I love how there's signs all over this place. No overnight truck parking. And every night it just fills up with trucks. <laughs> every night. says anything to them. Okay, so we're about to start the final part of the test to see which way is faster around International Falls. So yesterday going around the bypass was exactly 18 minutes and 51 seconds to get to that corner where we turn south on 71. That's from this intersection right here. So today we're gonna go right and see if it's faster or slower to go through town. Starting right now. Now 
this is the way I've always gone. I just learned about that bypass like a week ago in my comment section actually. And beneath one of my videos. Continue on this road for 18 kilometers. So I'm not trying to rush or beat my record or anything or make this the fastest way. Let's just see what let's just see what happens. Personally, I think this is gonna be the faster way. That's just my opinion. Let's see if I'm right. All right, we're at that intersection now where I came back onto the 71, right here. And we're at seven minutes, two seconds, just over seven minutes. We are quickly approaching the corner and I already know what the answer is gonna be. Which one? Which one do you think it is? Do you think it was the bypass that was shorter? Do you think going through the town was shorter time-wise? What was faster? I'll give you an exact time. Over 100 meters. Turn left on US 71. As soon as we get around this corner and pass that 60 mile an hour sign. That's where we stopped the clock yesterday. We did make it to Deer River. It's the next morning right now, I'm getting ready to go. You can hear the engine warmer on my truck already running, getting those fluids running, getting them warmed up a little bit before I turn it over. Not too cold out, but I like to do that every morning anyways, at least for a half hour, just have that thing running. Second load with these tarps. I've been very pleased. What I have done though, is on the corners here, I've added protection underneath there. Since these are brand new, the worst thing that could happen is that I rip them on the first couple of trips. Definitely don't want to do that. But they've been really good quality. The only thing I've noticed, like I was saying uh, in a previous clip there, is that these holes are further apart on the ends. My old tarps had one here, one here, one here like that they had twice as many going up there but it's okay it still works just fine as you can see that's the only difference really but it's nice tough quality has these little flaps behind here to protect from these some guys what they'll do to protect even more is they'll uh, hook the hooks to the rails here and then just have the rubber going through here that is a way of doing it. I, I'm not against doing it that way. This is just the way that's always, uh, it's just the way that I've always done it. <laughs> this way the tarp gets uh, the most pressure put on it coming down. I have one down here, I go through there, and then I go up to the second one to pull that down as well, if I can. But, you know, there's no correct way of tarping a load. The only correct way of tarping it is that it's fully covered and that the tarp doesn't fly off and that it doesn't rip you don't want it flapping though that's why I have this going up there because there's a little bit of loose tarp there right and if I didn't have that bungee going across there pulling it in together these corners would be flapping away and it's really bad you don't want your tarps flapping at all you want them to be tight because if I didn't have corner protection in there and I let it flap guaranteed by the time I get to my destination, there'll be a hole in each one of those corners there and a hole in each of those corners up there. The flapping, it sort of works like a little saw, right? As it goes on the corner, it just saws right through it. If that makes sense. You don't want flapping tarps at all. You want it toyed. 
But anyways, I'm going to get going on my next day here. We're going to go deliver in Brainerd. That'll be in tomorrow's vlog. Brainerd, Minnesota. And then from there, we head empty all the way down to Burlington, Iowa for a nice juicy load down there that's going to take me to Saskatchewan next week. But we're going to stop by at home on the way. So I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody, for joining me today. Thanks for watching and following. Best way, if you, if you like my videos, the best way you can uh, support me is by subscribing and by hitting that like button. Leave a comment down below. All those things greatly help me uh, reach more people. And I appreciate it a lot. And for those of you who have uh, wanted to go one extra step, you can go down below my video or to my main page, click the Join Now button and join the channel members, and you get early access to videos. So as soon as I have them edited, I put them on the internet, and I release them one per day at 4 p.m. But members get to see them right away. So sometimes you get them days early. Right now I have nothing early because I'm behind again. I've been very busy. I've got to edit. So what I'll do is I'll probably, I'll have time tonight. I'll probably edit like four, maybe five. And then I'll upload them all. And all of those five will be on YouTube. But they'll be released one per day publicly. But members have access to all five right away. That's how that works. You can read more about that if you click the join now button. If not, it's a simple subscribe, a like, and a comment is good enough as well. Thanks everybody. I'll talk to you tomorrow.